was just astonished to see so many PhDs in the room and that really, really gave me another push that I needed at, at a very critical time during this program. But I want to tell you what brought me through that period of sacrifice. I had a little ribbon from my two-year-old, a pink ribbon on my computer, and every time I wanted to stop, I looked and said, it's not about me anymore, it's about the future. I would just like to thank all um, for all the encouragement, all the love, and all the support. And to all the current graduate students, I just want to say, life is so much better after grad school. <laughs> so make sure you finish, okay? <laughs> the SRAB family has been real good to me and I hope that I'm able to give back. They've been emotionally, um, have provided me with emotional support when my father passed away. They've been there definitely financially and have helped me professionally and I hope that I'm able to give back in some way. The Southern Regional Education Board covers 16 states from Delaware to Texas and since 1993 has helped over 1,000 minority students pursue their PhD. The program's success is extraordinary. 90% of their students have either graduated or are working toward their degrees. 10% of their graduates now have tenure and that number is growing. Almost 80% are working in academia today as teachers, administrators, or doing postdoctoral research and most of them are employed in SREB states. On average, SREB doctoral students get their degrees in five years or less, two years less than the national average. And a third get their degrees in the STEM disciplines, science, technology, engineering, or math. Because of this success, other states and institutions have joined the program. Every year means more brand new PhDs. For all of their amazing financial support over the years and the amazing emotional support that I get here every year. So thank you to the Compact. I also would like to thank the SRB family, each and every one of them, because if it was for them, I would not be able to stand before you today and receive this award. Programs like SREB are the reason that I stayed on my PhD journey and I really did need that networking to finish my PhD, to move into the working world and to eventually move into academia. The annual Institute on Teaching and Mentoring, part of the National Compact for Faculty Diversity. There may not be a larger assembly of minority PhDs anywhere, and yet still there are too few. We know about the data nationally in terms of the numbers of U.S. domestic minorities who receive PhDs and who then are prepared for positions of leadership in this country is so small. Historically in the United States, money was always the way we dealt with education. You just gave money to students and said, call us when you get through. Well, they weren't getting through and that was the problem. Of course, money does help. In fact, it is critical. The support from SREB and from the Compact allowed me to not have to look for an additional job to make up that difference and therefore I could concentrate on actually doing my schoolwork. Definitely without that financial support as well as the uh, mentoring and social aspect of it, I would not have my PhD. So during that year where I was working on my dissertation, I was able to uh, support myself in part with SREB funding. Every story here is different, and in a way, they are all the same. Tiffany Polanco grew up in a basement apartment in the Bronx. She was the first in her family to graduate from college. In her PhD program at Rutgers, she was the only Hispanic. There was a great sense of loneliness, and after my second year, on top of feeling like an imposter, I felt like I did not belong where I was at all. I felt really isolated. And I went to my advisor and I talked to her about it and she really helped me through it. But I needed a, a serious push during my second year. I really almost, almost left. Many here have felt the same. Natasha Satcher remembers her first day in her doctoral program. And this particular professor told me that I was not going to make it. Flat out you're not gonna make it. And of course, uh, I had my doubts pursuing a PhD, 
And for him to actually tell me that um, really played a number on me. And when I walked out that particular class, um, walking down the stairs, uh, tears in my eyes, because I don't know at this point in time, I don't know if I'm going to actually be able to make it. That's why they come here. Beyond the banquet, there is also a kind of job fair with universities represented from all over the nation. There are also four days of meetings and seminars focused on networking, writing proposals, getting published, gaining tenure, mentoring, on and on, and something else, maybe the most important of all. And every year coming to the Institute and teaching and mentoring is incredibly motivating and it puts a spark in your soul that you can feed off of for the whole rest of the year. And I look forward to coming every year to get that back. When you go to the Institute, you get to leave some of the social challenges alone and try to refuel, so to speak, to realign, to bolster your strength so that you can go back into and recognize that your struggles are being shared. The Institute, I love coming to the Institute. In fact, I paid twice to attend on my own. And it just gave me that fuel to keep, that fire to keep going. I mean, and it was seven years, so I needed a lot of fire. Beyond the four days of the Institute, the program provides advocacy and mentoring and engagement all year long. It is more than a check and a handshake. And each year the goal is the same. Opportunity for the students, diversity for the nation. But what is the value of a minority instructor at the front of a classroom with the letters PhD at the end of his name? That's an experience that the vast majority of white people in this country don't have at the hands of a black person who are going to serve to expand their mind and bring them somewhere they couldn't otherwise go. And to me, the, the extent to which this program provides people who can do that, it's a critical function for the country. But diversity is as important for a non-minority as it is for minority because we are developing whole individuals and you can't do that in a vacuum. You can't do that if you've only been around people who think like you, who look like you, if you haven't had any exposure other than that. We've got to increase the number of minority students that we have that are available for faculty positions. Um, to be able to have the kind of impact on young folk to help people understand how to go outside of their cultures and to work together. You shall, you must, you will. So I encourage you to recharge your spirit, to refresh and renew your mind, and reconnect with your dreams. You can do it.